Okay. So good morning, everybody. I'm very happy, obviously, to receive the Secretary General of the United Nations, Mr. Antonio Guterres, here to Stockholm today. After two days of meeting with the Security Council at Dog Hammarskjöld's old country farm uh, of Bakokra. During these uh, challenging times when the world looks to, to you for solutions, uh, I'm very proud that Sweden could provide an, as I hope, an inspiring setting for the Security Council to meet more informally and discuss the burning issues of today how to strengthen the UN peacekeeping efforts, and of course, not least, Syria, uh, where the nightmare now has continued for more than seven years. We have all seen the unbearable suffering and the flagrant lack of respect uh, for international law, which, uh, sorry to say, has even including, included the use of, of chemical weapons. The millions of refugees, the hundreds of thousands of dead, and all these cast a dark shadow over our world community. We desperately need a UN-led political process with, of course, a cessation of hostilities as well as humanitarian access. Syria and other key uh, regional and global security challenges were also discussed in our meeting here today. Uh, no nation can solve all these problems and, and challenges alone. And this is why Sweden and the European Union supports a strong multilateral system with the United Nations at its anchor. But of course, the United Nations need to be strong, efficient, and accountable to meet today, today's challenges. And that is also why we have talked about the need of reforms. Sweden fully supports the Secretary General's proposals to reform the United Nations and we have a clear request and also expectations in relation to the United Nations, but we also off offer our support, our fullest support, technically, politically, and financially. We also talked about the need to reform the way we handle migration flows globally, and uh, also here the United Nations has a very important uh, role to play, and. Uh, as we believe, must focus uh, even more on refugees, both to deal with the current crisis that we have, and not least to find a sustainable system where more countries take more responsibility. So the global compacts on migration and refugees that are being negotiated could be an important step uh, in this direction. In conclusion, I thank you again Mr. Secretary General, for a productive and successful visit, for constructive discussions today about the partnership between Sweden and the United Nations and our work together to solve today's uh, global crisis and conflicts and for your leadership in trying times to make the world more peaceful and more prosperous. Please. Well, first of all, thank you very much, uh, Prime Minister, and uh, I want also to express my deep gratitude to the Swedish government for the wonderful hospitality the Security Council enjoyed, uh, and uh, for the wonderful hospitality I myself enjoyed in Uppsala and here in Stockholm. Sweden has been consistently, in uh, its section in the Security Council, a bridge builder. In a world where we see increased tension, I believe we can even talk of a resumption of the Cold War in many of its aspects. Sweden has consistently, fully abiding by the values uh, of uh, uh, human rights, uh, by the need to make sure that international law is respected, but at the same time uh, uh, trying to uh, reduce tensions, trying to bring together the different actors of the international scenario. And I believe this initiative of bringing for the first time out of New York the Security Council for a retreat, is perfectly in line with this bridge-building strategy of the Swedish presence in the Security Council. And I'm extremely grateful for this initiative. And I believe uh, the initiative was successful in the sense that uh, uh, we had two days of very constructive discussions that uh, things uh, have cooled down and that I believe it will, be porting now, it will be possible now to move forward in relation to key objectives. Uh, and in the case of Syria, to fully support 
a political solution, there is no military solution, and the political solution needs the success of the Geneva Inter-Syrian talks uh, that, as you know, are um, facilitated by uh, the United Nations. Uh, we need humanitarian access uh, to the whole of the Syrian territory, to everybody in need, and uh, we also need to find a way to uh, attribute responsibilities for those that have violated international law uh, with uh, uh, chemical weapons attacks that are absolutely unacceptable. Uh, and uh, uh, I think that at least the dialogue has restarted in order to see if we will be able in the near future to find a way to come out of the impasse that until now has blocked the efforts Sweden has constantly uh, uh, put in place in order to have a serious mechanism of attribution and accountability. On the other hand, I would like to express my deep gratitude for what has been Swedish role as a pillar of multilateralism in today's world, as the Prime Minister mentioned, uh, uh, not only in support of the United Nations, but uh, of uh, a world based on uh, the rule of law and uh, uh, with strong multilateral institutions. Uh, the challenges we face, uh, from conflict to climate change, from migration, all those challenges show that there is no way any country can solve the problems we face the only way is to strengthen international cooperation and to strengthen multilateral institutions. And Sweden has been a very strong pillar of this perspective and of the organizations like mine that are trying to respond to those dramatic challenges of today's world. In particular, I would like to express uh, my appreciation for the very strong involvement of Sweden in prevention, conflict resolution, mediation, sustaining peace, not only in supporting the United Nations efforts, but in your own bilateral uh, activities. And I would recall how uh, active uh, Sweden has been in relation to North Korea, in relation to Myanmar and other aspects, fully supporting the uh, multilateral initiatives with its own direct diplomacy, which is, of course, of enormous value to us. Uh, on the other hand, uh, in a world in which, unfortunately, humanitarian needs are growing, Sweden has been absolutely exemplary in uh, humanitarian aid. I was, for 10 years, I commissioned for refugees. Sweden was our best donor with uh, uh, core contributions, non earmarked allowing us to address the needs of the people more in need, and uh, at the same time, uh, with a very, very strong and solid support. Uh, and in development cooperation, uh, namely now, we have the Agenda 2030 and the Sustainable Development Goals. Sweden is uh, uh, a country that maintains, and I believe is increasing, its uh, development co a cooperation uh, aid uh, to more than 1% of uh, gross national income. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, Sweden has been in the forefront of climate action. I believe... Uh, Unfortunately, climate change is still running faster than us. I believe we need increased ambition that Paris must be implemented, but Paris is not enough. Sweden has understood it, and Sweden has today probably the best program in the world uh, in relation to uh, climate action with very important targets uh, uh, for emissions, fossil fuels, and other aspects in the near future. And I hope that this example will be followed, especially by those that have the largest contribution to uh, the emissions of uh, greenhouse gases. Um, on the other hand, um, uh, I want to underline the very important support of Sweden to our own reform process. Uh, in management aspects, in peace and security aspects, in uh, development, uh, uh, the UN development system uh, uh, projects, but especially in some areas in which Sweden has been a very important ally. As you know, I have a strong commitment for parity. We have today already in our senior management group the top leadership of the UN, 24 women and 20 men, which is a total reversal in relation to past trends. And we have a roadmap for gender parity around uh, um, the whole UN um, uh, in which Sweden has been a very strong supporter, but also um, in relation to our uh, absolute priorities in fighting sexual harassment, sexual exploitation and abuse, and other aspects related to the need of gender equality and the empowerment of women, Sweden has been in the forefront of uh, these efforts and uh, I would say uh, one of our most solid supports in a battle that is a difficult battle, but a battle we are determined to win with uh, Swedish support. 
And uh, uh, I would say in all other aspects of cooperation, we have had a permanent dialogue, a permanent uh, um, mutual support, and I'm extremely grateful for once more during this visit, uh, we uh, f had the chance to uh, look seriously into how we can develop in fur even further uh, our uh, coordination of efforts. And uh, once again, Prime Minister, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Guterres, a few hours before your meeting on Saturday, uh, North Korea announced that it would be suspending nuclear testing and the launch of missiles. Now, the Security Council was quick to, members of the Security Council were quick to say that this was because of the unity of the Council. But to what extent is this actually down to Mr. Donald Trump and the very heavy rhetoric that he has been using since he came into office regarding to the Kim Jong uh, um, regime? And in a second part, regarding the talks on Syria that took place uh, yesterday morning, can you tell us a little bit more about what uh, avenues are being looked at to uh, release the deadlock <coughs> that we are facing today? Well, first of all, I have no doubt that uh, if we are today on track, I hope, for a peaceful denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula, that is due to a number of uh, uh, reasons. I would say the most important of those reasons is the unity of the Security Council that was able to come together and to have a very strong and meaningful set of sanctions that I believe had a very important impact and to a certain extent made North Korea realize that it was necessary to come forward to enter into dialogue with the international community and especially with the uh, both uh, the Republic of Korea and the United States of America. So I think that this unity of the Security Council and the determination of countries in promoting the, uh, new, the peaceful denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula has been essential. I think the US played an important role. I think China played an important role. Uh, other countries have done so. Uh, and I hope that things will be on track and that this objective will be reached. Now, unfortunately, in relation to Syria, the unity of the Security Council has not existed. Uh, I believe that uh, uh, there are uh, three very important aspects that were discussed uh, during this meeting and in which I hope there will be progress. First, there was an unanimous, unanimous uh, recognition that we need a political solution and that that political solution is to be achieved through inter-Syrian dialogue with the UN facilitation in line with the uh, resolutions of the Security Council, the resolution 2254, the so-called Geneva communique, and uh, uh, in uh, the Geneva dialogue that must be reactivated. There was a clear understanding of all parties <coughs> of this need. Second, I think there was also a strong commitment uh, uh, in relation to humanitarian access, in relation to the capacity uh, of uh, the international community to fully support the Syrian people in these tragic circumstances and to overcome the obstacles that still exist to um, uh, full access of all Syrians to effective humanitarian aid. The most difficult thing has been the question, as you know, of accountability in relation to uh, chemical weapons attacks. Um, uh, there has been, until now, no possibility to come to an agreement in relation to a mechanism of attribution of these responsibilities for accountability to be possible. We had a very frank discussion, and there was a, an agreement that we should pursue consultations in order to see if the divide that is still meaningful that exists can be bridged. And again, Sweden has been playing a very important role in trying to bridge this divide, and I'm sure that that important role will be uh, maintained in the next few days and weeks. And I hope that uh, something that is absolutely unacceptable in today's world, the use of chemical weapons, will find a mechanism to attribute responsibilities and to allow for effective accountability. Okay, Swedish television here. Uh, I have a question to Mr. Gutierrez. Uh, what you say there was uh, constructive discussions, but in regard to Russia, uh, what has changed in their stance towards the Syria solution? And the Swedish Prime Minister, I would like you to answer, uh, do you think it's time to reform e uh, the UN uh, as far as to, to take away the veto from the members in the Security Council? There was not... Uh, in uh, the retreat, any progress in the 
specific discussion of how to create this mechanism of attribution. No. But there was the recognition that there are many aspects in which countries are in agreement, namely that that mechanism is necessary, and this was underlined by all, including by Russia. Uh, and second, uh, I believe that even if there are many aspects in which countries have different views, there are also many aspects uh, uh, that allow to uh, think, looking at past experiences and how things have been solved in other circumstances, that there might be a way to come to a solution. I sincerely hope that that will be the case, and I sincerely hope that uh, 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 all countries will make a serious effort uh, 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 in that direction. When it comes to reforms, uh, of course, we've said a long time, as a principle, we believe it, it's not right to have that system with veto. It's not on the agenda now. What we are supporting is the, the Secretary General efforts right now to find a, a better way, a better decision structure at the headquarters, uh, but also uh, in the different countries around uh, regions in the world. That is what we are supporting now. So we, uh, let's be realistic here. Uh, and we think that's an important effort, uh, important steps can be taken here. So that is on the agenda right now. Swedish News Agency, TT. So thank you for taking our questions. Uh, Mr. Secretary General, uh, you mentioned accountability for alleged chemical weapons as the most uh, difficult sticking point. Now, uh, I assume you have a vision for this. You talked about consultations. Can you elaborate a bit on how you see uh, the future uh, in future attacks? How do you want to deal with accountability if this happens again in the future? And also as a follow-up, we all know that Syria has uh, been a, a large source of refugees, and I know that you've been talking about refugees. How do you view the fact that some countries in Europe don't want to take in refugees nowadays. That question is for both you and the Prime Minister. And Mr. Prime Minister, uh, do you want to add on to the refugee questions and do you see other steps that Sweden can take to, to contribute to a peaceful solution in Syria? Well, first of all, as you know, we have today the Organization uh, uh, for Prohibition of Chemical Weapons that is uh, uh, in Duma uh, doing their research but they have not the possibility to determine who's responsible for an attack. They can detect whether or not there was an attack, but not who's responsible. There was a, a mechanism called the Joint Investigation Mechanism that existed, that produced its report. Um, the report uh, was contested by some countries, namely by Russia, uh, and there was no chance to renew the mandate of that mechanism. And after that, there were different proposals of new mechanisms to replace them that were not accepted. And this is the impasse in which we are. And this impasse is extremely negative and dangerous. And uh, uh, that was the effort in this, uh, uh, in this uh, retreat, not to discuss what the solution is, but to try to really create an environment in which countries will understand that we need to overcome this impasse and we need to find a way with an independent mechanism, an impartial mechanism, but a mechanism that is able not only to investigate what has happened, but to attribute responsibilities, allowing then the Security Council to use uh, the instruments of the Charter that are relevant in this case. Whether we'll be able to get there or not, it is the challenge that we are facing at the present moment. What is your vision? Is it independent I, I believe this mechanism needs to be independent, but there are experiences in the past that show that there are ways also to take into account concerns that some member states might have about the impartiality of the mechanism. So let's have an open mind and let's look into the future without uh, uh, immediately trying to configure a solution uh, before the necessary consultations are made. Uh, in relation to uh, Europe and migration and asylum, I was High Commissioner for Refugees when we had, after, uh, uh, if you remember, the difficulties in uh, the volume of humanitarian aid to Syrian refugees, uh, when, uh, for lack of funds, the World Food Programme had to announce a reduction in the support, and there was this idea that the refugees felt abandoned by the international community. We have seen this huge movement into Europe. And it was clear for me at that time that independently of the need to prevent, to <coughs> better support countries of first origin and to solve the Syrian problem in itself, independently of that, Europe 
the European Union had the capacity to respond to that inflow through a coordinated action in solidarity, uh, having adequate reception facilities, adequate screening and security screening, and an equitable distribution of those coming into all European Union countries. And these would mean that a country like mine, Portugal, would have received probably 20 or 30,000 uh, refugees that would be easily integrated in the Portuguese society. Instead, Europe was totally unable to find solidarity for this kind of integrated European solution. There was no European solution. And what we have witnessed was, oh, sorry. What was witnessed was that massive flow of people in all tragic circumstances that we know, moving up the Balkans and being giving to everybody the idea that things were out of control, that there was an invasion, that Europe all of a sudden would be invaded, even if the number of people that was coming represented about 0.2% of the European population. And as there was no solidarity at all, two countries, Sweden and Germany, have uh, essentially been the ones receiving uh, the overwhelming majority of the refugees, which is absolutely unfair, which doesn't make any sense. So um, uh, I think that uh, uh, if we want to have migration and asylum properly working in our world, we need to have international cooperation, we need to have international solidarity, and uh, all countries need to assume their responsibilities. And I hope that the discussions that are taking place in the General Assembly of the United Nations for the two compacts, migration and asylum, will allow for things to move in that direction and for a comprehensive approach coming from how development cooperation policies can help people have a future in their own areas of origin, how um, uh, we can crack down better on smugglers and traffickers uh, and uh, uh, protect the victims of smuggling and trafficking, how we can open new avenues for legal migration, uh, equitable distributed around the world to avoid these uh, huge flows of illegal migration or irregular migration where people suffer so much in the end of smugglers and traffickers. I mean, if we can come together and put together a package of measures uh, in a framework of international solidarity in which all countries need to cooperate, I think the problem is manageable, and I appeal to all European countries to follow the example of Sweden. That will also facilitate the work of Sweden, because if all assume their responsibilities, Sweden will not be under the kind of pressure that uh, uh, Sweden has endured in the recent past. Well, fully in line with what the Secretary General said, we, I mean, the situation we faced in the autumn 2015 was not sustainable, so something had to be done, and that is why we changed our domestic laws. But that is also why we are uh, very much involved in uh, the two processes in the United Nations on, on, on migration in a broader perspective and refugees. But also within the European Union, because this, is, this uh, actually takes uh, a lot of actors uh, and everybody to, sh to share the responsibility. And that is the key. Uh, shared responsibility uh, on the global level is important. Shared responsibility within the European Union is uh, very, uh, very important. So, so working together to, to, to uh, lessen the pressure for people to having to move, meaning that they can live a, a, a good life in their own country or in their own region. The more we can do with that, the fewer have to take this very dangerous journey uh, over the Mediterranean Sea, for example. So the more we can do on that, we have to have uh, also uh, uh, control on our borders, uh, meaning the national borders, but also the European Union. So the more uh, cooperation we can have, and we had two years ago uh, in the United Nations uh, a summit on this, uh, when the time, when the time when this process has started, there was a summit showing that uh, there are countries that do want to share this responsibility, but that's where we have to end up. So Sweden cannot have a more generous um, policy than, than, than our surrounding countries. It, it's not possible. Uh, but now we are very, very active in the process at the UN level and at the EU level to see how this all can fit in together. Is sharing well, discussions, would you say, going well or not well? Sorry? Is sharing discussions, is sharing of burdens, especially 
On the UN level, I believe the Secretary General is better <laughs> in place to, to comment on that. On the European Union, we all know it, it is a, a very tough discussion, uh, negotiations right now going on, but there is also uh, a commitment to try to solve the, this uh, challenge because if we do not do that, it'll be, it, we, we'll have still a, a very difficult situation when it comes to refugees, but we will also weaken the European Union, and nobody wants that. So uh, what I can see right now is that there is uh, real, true efforts made to, to solve this uh, challenge. When it comes to Syria, uh, we, we have been working very actively, not least our delegation in in the United Nations and our ambassador to the United Nations, Ulof Skog, uh, trying to, to find new ideas, uh, explore new ideas. We are not naive. Sweden is not the country that can solve this huge complex problem, but we do contribute in the discussions with idea and we, that's our, that's our uh, obligation as well as uh, with others. So we are working very hard trying to, to, to do whatever we can. Okay, last very short question, season four. Secretary General, uh, the Bakoka meeting might have eased the tension, but as you said yourself, we're a very long way, a long way away from actual decisions on Syria. Uh, what's at stake here? If the deadlock is not broken, uh, does the Security Council have any relevance and any influence at all in the modern world? Well, the Security Council has taken very important decisions recently. Look at North Korea. Uh, in several other aspects, the Security Council was able to come together and to have uh, to play a positive role. Several African crises have uh, uh, had the unity of the Security Council. Unfortunately, in other aspects, that uh, unity uh, doesn't exist. And that is where, of course, uh, uh, the Security Council loses the relevance for those situations. But I wouldn't say that the relevance has been lost for uh, uh, what needs to be pursued as a constant effort to guarantee peace and security around the world. And this is particularly important in a moment in which tensions are increasing, in a moment in which, as I said, we are witnessing a resumption of what was in the past the Cold War, but with two fundamental differences. Uh, during the Cold War, you had two superpowers that more or less controlled their uh, uh, allies uh, uh, or their satellites. Uh, 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 in, in a way that uh, things would not get out of control. Today we have many other countries that act independently and uh, can be in some situations spoilers uh, uh, in relation to the need to keep things uh, on track. And uh, during the Cold War there were mechanisms of uh, dialogue, of coordination, of uh, um, uh, guarantees uh, for uh, incidents not to generate in escalations, for things to be always kept uh, under control, to avoid spiraling out of control, and those mechanisms do not exist today. So I think there must be a serious effort to relieve the tension, a serious effort to find consensus, a serious effort to um, bring countries again together. Um, but at the same time, I think it's important to create the mechanisms or to strengthen the mechanisms that avoid, uh, uh, when tension increases, things to get out of control in a dangerous way. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.